Howdy, howdy, hello, and let's do an audio test. Well, I can hear myself. I hope you can hear me. Hello and welcome, as always. It is lovely to have you here. And I was thinking of doing something a little bit different uh, for the start of this stream. Because recently, I watched the Fallout TV show. Now, I've only watched two episodes so far. But there are some things I would like to discuss about it. But only if you guys want to hear it. So there is a poll in chat. And if you just cast your vote. If the majority say yes, we will talk about the Fallout TV show for a bit. There will be some spoilers. I will maybe try not to spoil too much. But I can't promise. So if you've not seen it and you don't want to hear anything, vote no. If you have seen it, or you don't care about me spoiling maybe a few things, vote yes, and I can tell you what I think about it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that poll up for a moment or two. Please feel free to vote. I'm just gonna go quickly get myself a drink. Hello, Guiding Star. Welcome. I think maybe you're the only person to have voted so far. We have a 100% yes, so it looks like we might be talking about it. I'll give it a few more minutes just in case people filter in. We've, we've only been live two minutes and believe it or not, I'm not the most popular streamer on YouTube. I know, I know, it's a shock, but it's true. It is true. So we'll just give it, eh, let's say until five minutes past. So three minutes, anyone who's happens to be watching but isn't voting you don't have to talk you just have to vote otherwise you're gonna get stuff spoiled and you might not want that as for me besides it being a uh, an interesting week of watching the fallout tv show i've been busy at work with uh king gaff creations we're ooh, we're making good progress on our current project um i think we're getting close enough that we can start maybe teasing a few more things than we have already. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that up to Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man Gaff. He he makes those calls. That's uh I can suggest such things, but such things are, are beyond me. I, I'm but a peon. I work in the mines. The the word mines. Mining up those words. Okay, we've got two more minutes. Any anyone who just happens to have me in the background, all two of you. Who haven't voted yet? <laughs> Click that button. Oh, I can actually see how many people have voted, or is it just a uh... three votes? Okay, so everyone who's watching, oh, we're up to four viewers. Welcome, viewer number four. We have a poll going on right now. It's whether or not I talk about the Fallout TV show, with the understanding that there there's probably going to be spoilers there. So if you don't want me to to ruin anything, you you gotta vote no. Even though at this point, uh, you can be outvoted, because it'll be three to one. But but if we at least get one no vote, that means I'll, I'll do my best to maybe avoid too big a spoilers. But we have one more minute. Hello, Canuck. Hail to you as well. We have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to cast that vote and then we're, we're done. We're talking about spoilery Fallout TV show things. And there's nothing you can do to, to take take it back. Once you've heard it, you've heard it. And I'm not going to be held responsible for, for any upset, for any ruining of, of story or plot lines of characters. It's all going to be on you, I'm afraid. Okay, countdown's coming. And there it goes. We're going to be talking about the Fallout 4 TV show. Fantastic. And I, I do have a... Well, would you look at that? We're somewhere new. What is this place? So anyone who just happens to be popping in, we're talking about the Fallout 4 TV show. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I, I've not written anything down. This is completely off the cuff, but I do have some thoughts about it. <laughs> We have a yay from Ken. Well, don't say yay yet. You don't know what I think about it. Ah. 
I I could I could hate it. You don't know. So I might I might ruin I might ruin it forever for you. Now there's a possibility I might ruin some certain yeah, some certain things. So I've watched only the first two episodes. And I went into this with very tempered views because the last Amazon original show I saw was The Rings of Power. Which, I don't hate that. I despise it. I I was so angry watching it in terms of not only what it does to the source material, but how it even presents itself. It was so poorly done, and for the amount of money they spent on it, I believe it was embarrassing. I don't understand how you can spend that much money and get that. Now, if, if you enjoyed the... Uh, the Amazon Lord of the Rings show, that's fine. Because just because I don't like something doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Probably does. It's probably bad. But even if it's bad, some people enjoy things that are bad. So if you enjoy that, that's absolutely fine. I don't think most people did. So I think I'm okay. I'm safe to say that show sucked and I it just made me angry to watch. So that was my bar of entry going in to watch this Fallout show because even though I don't think it really has any of the same creative people working on it, it is an Amazon show. So how much of what happened to the Rings of Power was because of the showrunners, and how much was it maybe Amazon interfering and saying you've got to do this, you've got to change that, we don't like this. If it was Amazon, then maybe they do the same to the Fallout show. So that was my main worry, and that's where my bar was set. Is it going to be better than the Rings of Power? I can safely say it is better than the Rings of Power. Now that's not a high bar to get up, to get over at all. It's a really, really low bar. But well done, good job. If it was worse than Rings of Power, I would have not even finished the first episode. I would have turned it off and I'm done, I'm out, I can't watch this. Episode 1, in a score uh, out of 10, I would give it a 5 out of 10. Now that's not, that's not a terrible score, but it's not a great score. It was a very middling experience for me. So... Things I liked. Um, I think they definitely went all out in terms of set design. And they, they're they definitely going for the slightly more cartoony feel of things, which is how Fallout's been since Fallout 4. Fallout 3 was still kind of grounded in the whole sort of dirty, grungy, more realistic side of things. Yeah, Fallout 4, they definitely suddenly went, okay, we're going to be more a bit more colourful. And you know what? I kind of like that path they went. I like the artistic style of Fallout 4. I think it's aged better than 3. Because there's a there's a stylization to it. So, I kind of like that they went that way with the TV show. Unfortunately, I don't think it really translates to uh, live screen. <laughs> you mean that they went Fallout? Ah, I see. Okay, I've, I've got to bump it up to a 6 out of 10 in that case. Because if they went Fallout, well, I, I, can't, I can't hold that against them. <laughs> No, but like the, the set designs I liked in terms of just what they were trying to do with them, but for me it didn't pay off because I'll we'll get into that a bit later. So first episode, um, it did an okay-ish job of establishing this world, but I don't think it did a really good job. So I think a lot of what they were trying to show and explain and like here, here's something, here's a, an organization, here's a character, here's an event, here's all these things. If you're a fan of Fallout, you understood these references and you're like, oh, I know what they're talking about there. I think if you were someone going in fresh and had no idea about Fallout, there's so much information you need for any of this to really matter to you. So I thought that was somewhat done poorly. I wasn't a fan of that. By the way, I'm going to be viewing this as a writer, in quotations, sort of a, a creative. So I'm looking at how the sausage is made, and that's not how most people look at these things. If you just were to sit and enjoy it, I think you'd probably give this maybe the first episode, maybe a 6 out of 10, maybe a 7 out of 10. But when you start looking into technical details, that's when it starts bringing it down for me, and I can't help but do that now. I'm stuck in a world where I can't watch or play anything, where I'm not thinking about why they're doing something, or how is this written, and what is this scene meant to be doing. Once you learn these things, it's very hard to unlearn them, so I ruin a lot of things for myself. So this is, this is the mindset I had watching the first episode. So I think they definitely didn't explain enough of this world to people, but maybe they're not wanting to do that. Maybe in later episodes they will start to explain more. I'm only two episodes in, so I can't be too judgmental on that so far. Uh, the the first episode, the pacing, not great, I thought. 
Um, I thought they could show us a lot more about Vault Life. Uh, we could get to know Lucy a little bit more. They really just crammed in you learning who she is and right at the start of it. And then they just get on with things. Which again is a way to do it. I just don't think that was a particularly good way to do it. We could have had a bit more of her character. Speaking of characters, I think a lot of the characters are really paper thin. Um, I, I like Lucy the most. But unfortunately what I think to be her personality isn't actually her personality. It's the personality of everyone who lives in that vault. All the vault dwellers seem to be a little bit simple. Uh, they don't really seem to get things, and it makes sense, they're in a vault, they're isolated, they're... I, I, I liked that aspect of it. But unfortunately, everyone in the vault shares the same personality, pretty much along with the main character, other than she's also adventurous and has meaning to leave the vault. She leaves the vault, by the way, spoilers. If you didn't guess that from the image on the screen right there, she leaves. Um, but they didn't really spend enough time, I think, establishing the vault, and that... Eh, that they could have done more there. They wasted a lot of time with slow motion scenes for some reason. Like, every five minutes it was slow motion. And I'm like, yeah, I know, they're fighting. I think the idea was they were wanting to show off the, like, hey, we got 50 people in a scene. Okay, so, brief story, spoilers. They're in a vault. Lucy's in a vault. She lives in a vault. And they're connected with this other vault. And every so often they ex make an exchange of people so that they can have fresh blood in the vault for breeding purposes. And they invite some new people into their vault and have a little celebration because Lucy's getting married to find her husband or whatever. And it turns out the people in that vault were actually raiders. Raiders come in, kill them all. I know, huge spoilers, I'm so sorry. Um, it, it's pretty heavy-handed, so you figure it out pretty much as soon as you meet those guys. It's Again, if you've played the games, you're like, hmm, why is that person covered in tattoos? Why has that one got scars on their head? That doesn't seem like something a vault dweller would have. That person's acting very raider-like, stabbing that person's food with their knife and eating it themselves. Hmm. So it was fairly obvious like oh they're they're either like a really bad vault but that doesn't make sense in the story or they're not who they're pretending to be so the raiders they infiltrate the vault and they attack everyone um and they end up kidnapping lucy's father but during this whole fight thing it's like oh we've got 50 people on screen fighting so they just do slow-mo all the time and i was so just i don't think they quite got what slow motion is meant to be for they were just using it to show off hey look what we did and it's like that's that's not in service to the audience that's in service to you guys don't don't masturbate yourselves in front of us. No one wants to see that, unless it's really cool, which it wasn't, so put it away. So, the the choreography is another thing in general I, I don't like about the show as a whole. Again, two episodes in, maybe it gets better. Um, things are very slow, very clunky, um, like fight choreography. Uh, so I'm... I, I've done fight on uh, fighting on, on stage and a tiny bit in front of a camera. And I don't know for sure this is how they do it in all the big films and all the big TV shows, but I'm going to assume they must do, because the people who trained me apparently were professionals. I can only take that word for that. Maybe they weren't. But the way you learn fighting choreography is you very slowly walk through the fighting sequence. I think they call it blocking. So it's like I raise my hand up and then you raise your hand up and grab my hand and then I try to hit you with this baseball bat, but then you duck out the way and do a roll and then you come up behind me, but then I, I jump over you. And basically, you walk through this, do it slowly, each person slowly memorizing it, you you talk with each other, you communicate, okay, I'm going to raise my hand now, I'm going to bring it down, you block, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and you do it again, and eventually you, you stop telling each other what you're doing, you just do it, you get faster every time, and eventually you can do something that looks kind of cool because you're moving really fast, but it's because you've memorized those movements, you've got muscle memory of how to do this whole fighting choreography thing now. By the way, I just saw someone voted no. How dare you vote no? I'm going to turn that poll off. It's too late. The poll's over. End poll. 75% yes. We're talking about the Fallout show. Anyway, back to fighting choreography. So you start slow, you build up, and eventually you get to the point where you're fighting at a decent speed now, and so it looks realistic. A lot of the fight scenes in the show, again, two episodes in, maybe it gets better, it looks like the point where you've only practiced three or four times, and so you're both moving really slow, doing exaggerated movements, you're telegraphing to, to each other so you don't want to actually hurt the person you're fighting with, you're, you're pretending to fight. But so many of the fight scenes in the show look like that, where you just... Again, all my complaints are <laughs> like really technical, niggly things, but they, each one draws me out of the experience a little bit. If you can ignore all these things, I think you'd enjoy the show a lot more, but unfortunately I can't. This is the mindset I'm always stuck in. So... That was annoying um, in that first episode, they had fights with the, the raiders where you had this slow motion going on and the choreography was just a bit like, eh. So that took me out of it. And um, they had a lot of scenes that um, didn't really do much. 
and to me that's always wasted time uh like at one point uh lucy when the they're atta the the raiders are attacking the vault she helps hide her brother in like uh in like a cupboard or something like underneath the floor and my instant thought was like oh everyone in the vault's gonna get killed but because lucy was clever and brave and hid her brother he survives and then you come out and like oh everyone's dead except her brother and maybe lucy because she stays out and fights no he just hides and then later he gets out it's like well, then why bother showing that that didn't give us anything useful in terms of lucy or her brother or oh she did something therefore she was proactive and, and stopped a bad thing from happening of her brother dying no it's just she just helps him hide so i guess that shows that she's nice to her brother it's like wrong time wrong place so there's just little things like that in terms of um these are the things i think you'd polish out eventually after going through things a few times uh let me just catch up with chat uh Knook says i'm not too thrilled about the fate of a faction i've heard about that and i, I agree with you and i i'm fairly sure i'm gonna be annoyed once they get to that in the show uh would have been better to build up instead of destroying and playing it off and playing in the rubble uh and iron 60 suits are dumb just use jetpacks yeah i will get to episode two <laughs> i know what you're talking about were they using vats they weren't using vats which is probably why the fight choreography was so bad if they used vats they could just freeze time line everything up and then go bam, 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 bam. but they weren't they weren't using vats so the fight choreography meh so eventually uh they leave the vaults but here's another niggle i have that they want to make things serious and yet goofy at the same time which is how it is in the games unfortunately it doesn't really mesh together really that well because the people in the world don't think, take things seriously because they're being goofy. Now, me as the audience, I can't take things seriously. So when they suddenly switch to being serious again, it's like, well, something goofy was happening a, a few minutes ago and they, they weren't concerned about things. Um, characters forget things they're meant to be concerned about, like, we're not meant to go above ground because radiation is scary. And then the vault door's opening and everyone's like, okay, well, don't go out, Lucy. We don't want you to leave. But because she leaves the vault to go chase her dad who gets kidnapped. Um, <laughs> and again, I'm, there's no structure to this. I'm just remembering it as I remember it. I didn't even really plan to talk about it, but I, I realized, hey, this is a Fallout stream. Maybe I should talk about that Fallout show. Um, so small things like that, like characters just don't, they don't act like characters who are actually living in this universe. They're acting like NPCs, I guess. Which again, if you were doing a one-to-one -one, um, retelling the video game, makes sense, but I just don't think it makes that good a TV show. Um, so that, that's Lucy. Um, her side of things was the most interesting. Um, she's the character I'm rooting for the most, but not really. <laughs> She's just the best out of the lot. Um, then you had the Brotherhood of Steel. God, they were boring. <laughs> Every time it cut to those guys, I was bored out of my mind. It looks like they had like one location they got to shoot at, which was that airfield. And then they had like a, a cool scene where the, the Pridwin-esque airship comes in, everyone goes, wow, and then we ignore it. We don't go back to that. Um, there's this, So the main character is uh, the dude there in the power armor. I think his name is Maximus. And... We follow him, so he's the Brotherhood guy we're with. Um, he ends up um, becoming a squire kind of character to a, a, a knight-esque character in the Power Arm. But there's a whole thing there where his friend is meant to get it, but then like there's there's some razor blades in the boots and then it cuts the, the feet up, so they think that he did it, but he didn't. Um, and they're questioning him, but they question him in like this burnt out bus and it's like the elder characters questioning him It's like shouldn't the elder character have you know like an office or shouldn't we be aboard that big airship that we saw before? Like why do are we why are we in this burnt out van or something like it was a really weird choice I think that they realized they didn't have anywhere to shoot the scene and so just said oh we'll just do it over there That's kind of cool, but it, it didn't work for the scene. So It's so weird like they have all this money They put all this effort into it and yet they didn't realize maybe we should have an office set aside when he gets called in to talk to the Elder. No. Do it in a bus. And it just made the Brotherhood look really pathetic. It's like, really? Do you guys just like, do you only have like the, this tiny little area that you live in and that's it? It was really weird. Um, budget restrictions, maybe? Uh, but that brought me out of it. Uh, the Brotherhood guy, he's boring. I don't like him. He's such a boring personality. Um, compared to Lucy, Lucy has like... 10 charisma. This guy's got two. Um, so I'm just not interested in him and I don't know what he's about. They didn't really good, didn't do good characterization with him outside of really blatant stuff. Um, they did a lot of telling and not showing, which I'm sure everyone knows that's storytelling 101. And it's com compared to a video game, it's much easier to show on a TV show because you have complete control over the camera, what the audience sees, how long they see it for, you can play music. That's another thing. Way too much music. 
every every couple of minutes it's hey here's some music from the game do you remember oh god they also use sound effects from the game and i think they're trying to be clever but it just sounds cheap and it's like oh just you can get a sound effect that sounds similar to it and that's kind of reference but no they just use literal sound effects from the game and you can get away with that for like the pit boy um but i'm fairly sure they use like a dog bark that was from the game um they use like someone putting something down clunk noise from the game it's like things that shouldn't it just it takes you out of it immediately um that annoyed me <laughs> this is the what annoyed me uh, rant mostly um and then eventually we get introduced to the ghoul character i i think he's got a name so far they're just calling him the ghoul i don't know what the hell they're doing with this dude because they find him and he's buried in like a coffin and it's like they're implying that he gets he's been in that coffin for like a good few years maybe like a decade or two and i'm like i don't i don't think you guys know what ghouls are they're not zombies people call them zombies but they're not zombies if you're a new person watching this you think this dude's undead because that's that's all the information they give you they don't explain what really what a ghoul is other than i think they mentioned radiation but again if you're a new person coming into this you don't know what the hell they're talking about so you just this dude's a zombie so i know there's a whole debate of whether or not ghouls uh can survive without food and water most people seem to fall down on yeah they need food and water like they're still alive they still need things to sustain them and give them energy Maybe when they become super, super feral, uh, radiation sustains them, or they become glowing ones, radiation alone can sustain them because, you know, science magic. But let's let's hand wave that and say, okay, ghouls don't need food or water, which, you know, the kid in the fridge, which we all know that infamous, inf infamous? infamous quest in Fallout 4, where you find the ghoul kid in the fridge. Uh, how has he been there for 200 years? But let's hand wave that. Let's say, that's fine. Bethesda have officially said... Ghouls don't need to eat or drink, even though they contradict themselves sometimes. But let's just say that's how it is. That quest is still stupid with the, the kid in the fridge because he's been in there for 200 odd years. Was he in a coma? Did he go into like hibernation? Or is he insane because he's been trapped in a confined space for 200 years? He'd be insane. Like they need to establish that ghouls can hibernate or something. I don't think that's ever been established in law. Could be wrong. Uh, Canuck says, uh, Bethesda has never done ghouls very well. Uh, Billy in the Fridge. Yep, there you go. See, Billy in the Fridge. Even, like, I get what they were going for and like, isn't this funny? It is. But it breaks you, it's, it's too much. It breaks you from the reality, which is a problem I have with the TV show sometimes. You have a lot more leeway in a game. In TV, you expect a bit more groundedness. For, otherwise you can't invest in it. Because if, if the world doesn't have... Uh, reason and logic that you can follow and anticipate and understand this will always happen because that's just how things happen it's it's harder to invest in things they're setting themselves up for failure which is so annoying it's like just just remove those things or tweak those things and suddenly it's a lot better uh, so the ghoul i don't know what they're doing with him um in the second episode he gets shot a bunch of times and he's fine i thought they were going to reveal like he had armor in his back in his back of his, of his coat like he had a plate of metal in there or something no he just got shot and he's fine. Again, I don't think that's how ghouls work. Uh, I know they can heal themselves through radiation, but, you know, uh, were they making a joke about uh, a lot of the enemies being bullet spongy? And again, I guess you can do that, but it takes away from me being invested in this world, so I don't get it. Uh, Kan says, I can't stand the ghoul in the fridge. Uh, the acting alone is awful. <laughs> it, It's this kid, okay, like... It only works if you assume the kid's been in a coma. Otherwise, this guy, he's hes 200 years old. Like, he's, he's matured in the body of a child in a fridge for 200 years. He's crazy. That dude is crazy. So, I can only assume ghouls can hibernate. But I've never heard this said. And you have to tell me this. Otherwise, I don't know what's going on. And I, I'm someone who knows the game. So, that confused me. Didn't like that. You can just remove that. Get rid of that. It's stupid. I don't... I think they thought it was cool visually. That's another thing. They seem to be going with, like, is it cool? Yeah, let's do it. Does it make sense? Nah, who cares? And if you just even made a reason for why it, why this thing exists, instantly you get it to have to be cool, it can be cool, and it makes sense, you can win-win. You just have to put some thought into it, and they didn't do that, that annoyed me. Uh, so that, that's my general thoughts on episode one. A five out of ten, it's like, eh, it wasn't Rings of Power. Fantastic. I was, I was happy to watch the next episode, so it didn't, it didn't completely ruin it for me, made me go, oh god, I don't want to watch more, so... I know I've been very harsh, probably, and anyone watching it who enjoyed the show, it's fine. You can enjoy the show. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying I'm very, very petty. <laughs> and pick apart, I pick apart the tiny things and it ruins stuff for me. So I, I, over, I wasn't impressed so far. Oh, also, so I am a writer. Uh, I didn't like the writing. 
Um, generally, the dialogue was clunky, which I thought did work for the Vault Dwellers, because they would have this weird stilted society that sort of has they will have, have an odd way of speaking, and you know they they have Vault Tech propaganda, so they're gonna talk in weird odd ways. But then when you meet the Raider characters, the Raiders talk in the exact same way. So I'm like, oh, that's just what the writers write like. So I wasn't impressed with the writing. Um, it can be very clunky, um, very, very saying instead of showing. And just, it's the kind of thing I'd say, we need to do another pass on that. Like, the framework's there, we just need to polish it up. And they just didn't do that for the writing, so... That annoyed me a little bit. Moving on to the second episode, see what I can remember. Um, this one so far, I would have... Oh, so far, I've watched the whole thing. Um, this one I gave a 4 out of 10. It went down. Usually you expect it to go up. The first episode tends to be the most difficult. Because you have to establish a lot of things. You have to establish setting, characters... Uh, motive for the characters, we have to start rooting for a character. And I didn't really have that in episode one, other than like, eh, Lucy's alright, I guess. She's the one we spent the most time with. Okay, I wanted to find her father. I don't really care. <laughs> but I, why not? Let's let's have her go on an adventure to find her father who's been kidnapped. For some reason, we don't know yet. I'm assuming it'll be vaguely interesting, but maybe not. They might be doing the mystery box ploy, which is where they present us with a mystery, and so we're intrigued. But really, there is no mystery. They're just tricking us, uh, and I hate that. That's really disrespectful to the audience. You've always got to have a mystery that's worthwhile. Otherwise, yeah, you just... I, I think that's really just disrespectful. Don't waste your audience's time. Don't tease them with things and be like, ah, that was nothing, you just thought it was. No, don't do that. Um, so hopefully that pays off and the whole father plot is interesting. Hopefully. But episode two, um, a lot of wandering around, which works, we're in a wasteland, but they didn't really do anything with it. Um, the first notable thing that annoyed me was uh, Lucy meets like her first real wastelander. I think she meets someone a bit before it who's an Enclave guy. We won't discuss that guy. Uh, I mean, he's kind of important to the plot, but not really because he dies like, really quick. But he has the dog, you know, the dog meat dog. So that, that's what he does, he brings the dog. But So here's a scene that I can break down of like how, how they just missed so many opportunities. So Lucy comes across her first wastelander. And this scene is, it's played for laughs. The Wastelander's dumb and goofy and he's walking about in his underwear because he's a dumb Wastelander. And we show up and the camera's focused on like a water purified look, looking thing. I figure that's what it is. He's hitting it with like a wrench trying to get it working. Eh, it's a bit funny. You know, that's what Wastelanders do. Oh, we play the games. That's what they do. They walk up to things and just do a weird little animation because they're trying to get it to work and it never works because that's just what the game does. Oh, yeah, it's, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with this so far. Lucy has like a standoff with him where she like gets out a gun and points it at him, but she's being all polite and he's kind of like, well, I've got no weapons. And she says, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, yep, putting the sand in the purifier. First of all, that joke didn't land for me. It was too, you can have that joke, but they put too much uh, spotlight on it. They were trying to really make us see the funny joke. If you had that joke just come and go, I think it would have worked a lot better. Uh, same for the whole scene, really. So, okay, again, I'm going to get into my writing mind here. Scenes must have purpose. Uh, they even need to progress the plot, uh, add characterization, or in some way be impactful. But generally those first two are the important rules you have to try and keep in your head. They have to advance the plot somehow, hopefully in an interesting way, or allow a character to do character stuff and grow and teach us things about the character as an audience, maybe let them experience something, um, maybe get a setback, you know, character stuff. Uh, so she's talking to the Wastelander and she offers him some water, he just takes it and drinks the whole thing. And he's like, oh, if someone offers you water, you drink the whole thing. I'm like, okay, they're setting something up. He's thirsty. He doesn't have water. She's learning something about the wasteland. The wasteland's a harsh place. Um, like, he's not rude about it. He's just like, oh, I, I'll drink that. So they're setting something up here because he was banging that water purifier before. And they set up the joke of, like, he says, uh, it's kind of just put out, like, um, I tried putting sand in it, but no water comes out. And she's like, have you tried putting water in it? And he's like, what? Again, the joke almost works for me, but they shine too much. And again, you might have thought this joke was really funny, and now maybe I'm ruining it for you. If you like the joke, if you like that scene, fantastic. I just didn't like it. Um, so here's what I thought was going to happen. I thought, Lucy's trying to find a town, because she wants to find like the nearest settlement. I think at this point she knows where her father's going, or just wants to find the nearest town. I can't remember. Um, I only watched it yesterday. Already don't remember. But I thought, okay, what's going to happen is, we've established Lucy's from a vault. In the very first episode, we see that she knows how to do vault maintenance. Right now, she's out of her element. She's wandering in the wasteland. She is the fish out of water. She's come across someone, and this guy, even though he's an idiot, he lives in this world, so he can give her wisdom. 
even though he's a moron. But Lucy, at the moment, who is... She's, she's the moron now, because she doesn't actually know how any of this stuff works, and he's sort of making fun of her a little bit in his own little way. But what she's going to do is like, hey, a water purifier. I know how to fix that, because I know how to do this because of knowledge and skills I have from my unique standpoint. Me, the character from this, from this vault, me being a vault dweller, I know how to fix this. This is something that I am bringing to the wasteland that is unique and no one else has. I'm now going to demonstrate some of my skills and I'm going to help you fix this thing. And by helping you do it, just for free, just because I'm a nice person, I'm also showing some character stuff. This and the wasteland is like, whoa, wait a minute, you're helping me and not asking for anything? She's like, yeah, that's what people do, right? That would have been a nice little scene. They don't do that. Because <laughs> what you do is you have her do it and then the guy's like, well, what do you want to exchange? She's like, I just want to know where the town is. He's like, it's over there. Is that all you want? That's all I want. Oh, well, thanks a lot, miss. You're welcome. Off you go. That's a nice little scene. It allows Lucy to do something proactive. She gets some information out of it. She had a little motive. She had a way to a, a moment to show some character. No, they don't do that. She just asks where the town is and he just points the direction and that's the end of the scene. That's all that scene does. That's the only useful thing that entire scene does. It just, she needs to know where the town is. Long exchange. And then at the end, the guy goes, the town's over there. And she says, thanks and moves on. Just... I was ang now this is when I got angry watching the show because it was such a wasted opportunity and that's for me personally what I feel in many of these scenes. The setup is there, the framework is there, and they just don't do enough of it, or they don't do the thing you're meant to do with it. And this this isn't like um, this isn't like me being a genius like I'm such a good writer. This is like basic stuff um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, Can saying I was actually really hoping for something like that myself. Yet yeah, see that's what the scene. Like, I'm not sure if they, that was what they intended and they just decided to go with something else because why else is the camera right up there on the on this prop? They spent money making this prop. They didn't need it. The guy could have just been hitting a, a hammer on a wall or something to show he's a dumb wastelander and just doing something dumb. No, they have a water purifier. They have an entire speech about the water purifier and then she just leaves. Maybe in a future episode it comes back. I don't think it does. I think they just didn't realize what to do with that scene and I, I don't understand how that's possible. Like, what are the writers doing? Who didn't tell them they should have the scene do something? Blew my mind. So that's when I became angry watching the show. I'm starting to get annoyed now. Um, this is when it dropped from a, a four out of ten to a, a five out of ten, rather to a four out of ten for me, and I was becoming annoyed. Um, skip ahead. She manages to make her way to town. It's kind of cool to see the town, but again, they don't really do anything with it. Uh, she sees a store that has vault things, so she goes into the store because she's trying to find the raider who took her dad, and she knows the raider's name, so she mentions the name. The storekeeper's like, hell, everyone knows who that raider is. I'm, I'm not messing with that raider. And now the ghoul shows up, because he's hunting... Sorry, I, I missed... I completely passed the Enclave guy. There's an Enclave scientist guy, and he's running away for reasons. Uh, and the ghoul's hunting him, because there's a bounty on him. And I think the Brotherhood... Of, oh, that's it. The Brotherhood of Bounty... The Brotherhood also are tracking the bounty. I'm just skipping past these things, because they're just so unimportant. I hate all the Brotherhood scenes. They're really annoying. I'll get back to that, actually, because they were obnoxious and they annoyed me. Uh, but Lucy's in town. The Brotherhood guy comes in. He's wearing power armor now. I'll jump back to that. Um, and they have a fight scene between the ghoul and him. And the fight scene's so dumb because, first of all, as we just pointed out in chat, he they've changed it so that um, power armor don't need, like, a jetpack to to fly around. They sort of... They can, they can Iron Man it by shooting flames out of their hands and feet. And it just looks really dumb. <laughs> it doesn't look cool. If they thought it was cool... Ah, sorry guys, it doesn't look cool. Maybe they want it to look dumb, but I don't get the point. And they have a fight scene, and this is another example of the cur cur curi the, the fighting moves. Can't say that word anymore. Uh, my brain's melted. Um, now I get the power, power arm is meant to be slow, but it really looks like they're just going through the motions of training for this fighting scene, as like uh, Maximus, the guy in the power armor, just like a swipe at the ghoul, and the ghoul sort of like is really far away from him, just moves a little bit, and it just looks like they're practicing. It doesn't look like a fight scene. Also, the power armor guy gets his foot stuck in some wood. The dude's in power armor. We established early in this episode that he can, like, launch things a million miles an hour and can kick a rock and it shatters apart a building made of bricks. But he gets his foot trapped in a bit of wood for a scene to happen. Such bad writing. It's so dumb. It's just... Why did that happen? Because we need it to happen for the story. That's awful writing. That's... Good. That's my main problem. I think it's the... Whoever wrote these episodes, I, I'm not happy with their work. They need to go back and do a revision um but that's i'm gonna jump back now so the power armor guy so we 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 we're with lucy most of the time sometimes we jump to the, the brotherhood guy in his power armor 
And sometimes we jump to the ghoul very rarely, but he gets the least time so far. So initially, Power Armor Guy, he's like a squire, and his Power Armor Dude in Knight that he's the squire to is just a huge jerk. And you get immediately what they're going with, like, oh, he's a huge jerk, he's really mean, he's... It's like... It's too much. It's too much that he's just being a... Like, he's swearing at him all the time, he's making him, like... You come with me, you polish my crotch. Polish my crotch, bitch. Sorry, wait, we tend not to swear, but that's literally what the scene was. Because uh, he's just they're showing that this guy's a bad guy, but they establish this for about 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes of this Brotherhood guy in his armor just being nasty and mean to Maximus to establish that he's nasty and mean. It's like, this is like notes on a paper. You say, the Brotherhood guy is nasty and mean. He makes Maximus do silly, demeaning things, and he's a jerk, and he does jerk things, and he wanders around being a jerk. 10 minutes of that. That's 10 minutes we could have had character growth, um, learn interesting things about the world, establish stuff. No, just 10 minutes of him just being a joke for no good reason. Uh, he just, The Power Armor guy decides he wants to go fight uh, fight something because he's bored. And again, this I don't know what's wrong with the Brotherhood in this. They don't act like the Brotherhood at all. Maybe that's the point. Again, two episodes in. Maybe it turns out these are like fake Brotherhood or something. Because they act nothing like the Brotherhood. And there's so much fun things you can do with the Brotherhood. And to me, it's just wasted opportunity. Um... So the guy jumps out of the vertebrae they're traveling in because he wants to go fight something, he's bored, he brings uh, Maximus along, who's his squire, and they find a cave and a Yogwai's in there, and it turns out the... He, first of all, he sends Maximus in, he's like, you, squire, go into that cave. He's like, why? You're the guy in power armor. Because I'm a jerk. Go in that cave. <laughs> See if there's anything in there. It's like, why is this guy such a jerk? It makes no sense. Like, we don't even know why this guy's being a jerk. It's just so stupid and dumb. Um, It's really bad, poor writing and character building. I don't... Again, I don't know what the writer's doing here. So they go in, but it turns out the Ogwai was outside and it's coming into the cave, so it attacks the Power Armor guy, ends up ripping him apart. Uh, and then eventually uh, Maximus shoots the thing with a gun. And then the Power Armor guy's like, help me, help me! And then Maximus is like, no, because you were a jerk to me for 10 minutes. And I think he just lets him die. And then he takes the Power Armor himself. But it's like, none of these things are bad on paper in terms of like, okay, this scene these basic things happen. This scene, these basic things happen. It's just they didn't do much beyond that. They didn't realize, okay, we actually need to have, you know, dialogue and writing and story. And so, uh, second episode, huge step down for me. I'm hoping it gets better. I don't want to not like this show. It's a Fallout show. As you guys might know, I kind of like Fallout. Um, now, that was, that was a complete rant and rave all about the place. Um, and then the end of the episode... Um, Again, with um, a bit of a, like, um, so, so the en Enclave guy kind of gets saved because everyone's hunting him and Lucy is now looking after him because if she helps him, it will help her find her dad somehow. Again, it's really poor motivation. I know we make fun of Fallout games all the time for having poor motivation, at least as far as the player goes, because, like, I don't care about saving my kid Sean from the Institute. I w I, he was like a potato and I met him for like a minute. I really don't care. They're, they're having that problem again, but in this universe where they have complete control over characters and situations where you can you can have these things. And I mentioned to someone, like, we've spent about two hours in this so far. That's about the length of your average film these days. And by that point in a film, we've done and seen so much. Often you're connected to these characters, you care about them. And I'm just not getting that with the Fallout show. We're two hours in. And I'm like at that point, you should have done a lot of things that you haven't done yet. And I just don't know why. You you can probably cut each episode down. You can cut it in half. And it would probably improve it in terms of pacing. And just getting rid of bloat that doesn't need to be there. Removing scenes that kind of do nothing. Maybe that would improve it. Maybe there's just too much bloat in between things. Um, Canuck says, I can't remember the Brotherhood of Steel uh, treating each other like that. Exactly. Um, so the, the Brotherhood guys, like they're all bullies. And they're all beating each other up. And... Okay, this makes no sense. Again, poor writing. Um, so we establish in the beginning Maximus is being beat up by some br Brotherhood bullies. We don't know why. It's not important. We just know that they're mean. And they suck because they're mean. We don't need reasons for things. Um, and then later on, when his friend, uh, who was going to get his position, gets injured, he's presented with the her their uh, position is dead. So he, he can take it over now. Um, and the elder guy gives a speech of, like, in the Brotherhood, um, that's like the, the elder guy asks, "I like, are you happy that they got hurt?" And he's like, "Kind of." I was like, "Okay, that's that's again, that's interesting that he he's being honest." Like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad my friend got hurt because now I can do that job instead." 
and then the Elder has a big rant about like, that is not the Brotherhood way. It's, it's okay to hate outsiders, but we do not act that way with our Brotherhood people. We love them, and we must... And it's like, dude, just before we had a bunch of officers walking past a bunch of lower soldiers beating the crap out of someone for no reason, and you didn't give a shit. Like, it's... What, <laughs> you can't... You can't even have characters who exist in the same place have coherent thoughts and motivations. What are you doing? Like, it makes zero sense, because, like, well, it's bullshit then. Of course you let them do that, because they were just doing it to Maximus, and then they do it again to him later. And also you got this other Brotherhood guy, the night guy who I was ranting about previously, who's just a big jerk to Maximus for no reason. It's like, why? It, none of this makes sense. The, yeah, the Brotherhood were the worst. I was never... Whenever the Brotherhood came up, I was either bored or annoyed. Lucy's got the most interesting story so far, because, you know, it's a vault dweller. That's, it's, that's always interesting, but they're not doing enough with it. The ghoul they're keeping mysterious, because he only shows up a few times, which makes him the best character, I guess, because they don't... Other than him being undead and raising from a grave for some reason, which I really don't get what they're going for there. Um, he, he's probably the most interesting character, but again, it's only because we just don't know anything about him. <laughs> it's just the mystery is like, oh, maybe he's intriguing. Um... The acting as well, um, I'm not a fan of the acting. I don't know if it's... Um... And here's the thing, the director is like a very good director, so I don't know what's happening there. Like, he should be able to get the performances he wants from the actors, so I can only assume someone's told him, like, no, we want the actors to act in this way. I don't think the actors are really, really, really bad. Often when you see a bunch of actors not doing good, it's because of the, the, de it's the decisions the director's making, not necessarily the actors. Um... So for some reason, I think they're trying to have them act kind of goofy and like NPCs, but like, to me, that doesn't make engaging characters or TV shows. Um, I, I kind of get it if that's what they're going for, but it just doesn't work, I don't think. And here's the annoying thing. If you could just like fix all these tiny little things and just polish it, like it's polish. It's polish that they've not done. And if you did that, the show would instantly jump up a few points. And like, I would think that's what they want. They want people, they want what happened with cyberpunk edge runners. Which was fantastic. If, you, if you've played the Cyberpunk game and liked it, and you've not seen the anime series they made about it, go watch it. It's fantastic. It's really good. Not only does it respect the source material, in of itself, it's an interesting thing. I think more people watched that than maybe had played the games originally. And because of this, Cyberpunk had like a renaissance where so many new people were coming into it to play it because they just saw this random TV show. They didn't know what Cyberpunk was. They never played this game. Most people don't play games but they do watch television, and they do watch television-esque shows. So that was a really clever move in terms of marketing. I think that's what they were trying to go for with this show. It's, I'm an average person, I don't play games, don't know what Fallout is, just going through the TV channels. <laughs> that shows my age, no one goes through the TV channels anymore. Okay, I'm just surfing on my, um, my subscription stream service, and, ooh, Fallout, what's this? Click. Oh, this is cool, power armor, vault dwellers, ghouls, cool. There's a game about it? I'm gonna play that. I think that's what they wanted, so... If that's what they were aiming for with this, I think they fell short, and the annoying thing is... They didn't have to. They, they could have done a lot better, so... We've still got, uh, six episodes more for me to watch. I think there's eight episodes in total, I've watched two. I, I'm, I'm leaving it a few days for me to just get rid of the bitter taste of episode two out of my mouth, which so far is the worst episode. I, I hope I've not ruined this for anyone who's been watching and has been enjoying it. <laughs> I've no idea. If, um, if all you guys liked it, if you liked it, that's great. Um, if you could ignore the things that annoyed me, that's fantastic. Um, uh, Kant says, that's exactly what they want, I swear. Yep, I think that is. Uh, Eirik. Eirik, what a great name. Eirik Hansen. Ruined. He says it's ruined. It's awful. It's, it's trash. Get it out of here. Burn it. But the annoying thing is it didn't have to be. Uh, they just needed someone to come in and... Okay, it sounds very arrogant, like, oh, I can point all these things out. But I don't think it's that I'm a writing genius. I think it's that, for some reason, they just didn't do the necessary polish. <laughs> Eric hasn't watched it. Eh, you can watch it. It's like a thing. Like, I'm not... I'm happy that I watched it, but so far, I don't think I'm ever going to watch it again once I'm finished. And that's a shame. I'd I'd rewatch um, Edge Runners right now. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. That was great. I could rewatch that. It was really well done. Um, you could tell the people who worked on it were talented, and l probably liked, or at least very much understood the source material. I think the people who worked on the Fallout show, a lot of them do understand the source material, because there's so many references to, th to things. Um, but they also kind of... 
don't treat it in a way that works properly. That's a whole different... I could rant about that for another hour. That's like a... That's how you translate mediums to different mediums, like books to film. That's a whole different uh, tangent to go down. Uh, Canuck says, Most of the opinions I've heard uh, place it in the 6 to 7 range. Yeah, I think... I think if you aren't bothered by a lot of the stuff that bothers me, you, you can have it like that. And again, I've not seen the whole thing yet, so maybe the whole thing, once you've seen it all together, you're like, okay, that was good. Like, eh, some weak episodes here and there, and some stuff that didn't make sense, but if you can ignore it, the whole thing was pretty okay. Um, so I'm going to try and watch more, because I, I want to like things. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't want to watch things and hate them. I, I want to watch things and enjoy them. Um, but having learnt how writing works, it kind of has ruined stuff for me. Um, occasionally, I'll go back and watch a TV show or play a game that I've not played in a long, long time that I used to really like, and I realize, oh, this is... Oh, this isn't very good. <laughs> and it's because I, I see all the faults that I, I never really paid attention to before, because I've learned how to do these things myself in, in doing stuff like SS2 and now working on the King Gaff creation stuff. Like, at this point, I have spent almost a decade um, writing um, stuff. And that's strange for me to think about. I still don't think of myself as someone who does these things, but I, I do. I've been doing it for about 10 years now, so I, I guess I do have enough to kind of know what I'm talking about at this point. And I like to watch other people who definitely know a lot more than I do. And they would, I'd imagine, say a lot of the similar things I'm saying, but with way better explanations and less rambling. Uh, because now I can at least feel when things are wrong and can kind of explain why things are wrong. I think sometimes people will watch something and if they don't understand the how and why of it, they can still feel it's wrong, they just can't put words to it. Now, I don't think the Fallout show is that bad. In terms of you're just watching it like, oh, this is awful. I don't know why, but it's awful. I think you can watch it and enjoy it. I think there's enjoyable things there. Um, I just think um, the writing is the the worst offended. So it seems need to be tightened up. Uh, dialogue needs to improve. Uh, a lot of the dialogue was very clunky. Um, I actually... So a comment I made when I was watching it was, this feels very Marvel, but like late film Marvel when they kind of stopped being good. <laughs> like that's how it felt in terms of some of the jokes. And some of what they were doing. And bizarrely enough, I think like a Marvel-esque feel can work for Fallout. Because Marvel is kind of a bit silly and a bit zany and a bit goofy and very colourful and bright. Uh, especially when compared to something like DC. Uh, but it felt like late Marvel. Um, and so after I watched the first two episodes, I looked up who, who directed it and who wrote it. And two of the writers... Uh, so I think that I could be wrong. I think there's two main writers who wrote the entire series, um, or at least wrote the first two episodes. One of them was the writer for Captain Marvel, and that's the only Marvel film they've written. And I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." <laughs> so that feeling of like this feels like very Marvely in construction. That's probably why uh, one of the main writers did work on Marvel stuff previously only made one of them, and it wasn't a very good one. I've not seen it personally, because I'm not that big of a Marvel fan, but I've not heard very good things. Um, even from people who are, like, diehard Marvel fans who like all the films, like, you must watch all the films. They were like, yeah, I didn't really like that one as much. So that makes sense. And I think the other writer, uh, he hadn't done much, and I think he did write a single episode of, like, um, one of the new Star Trek shows, and I hate those shows. And I think those are also have really bad dialogue and writing, so... I guess those two are to blame, uh, for the most part, in terms of writing. Uh, but the director, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, he's a famous director guy, and he's done some amazing stuff. Like, I've wa I have watched um, one of the films he did a few weeks ago called... Interplanetary? Is that what it was called? I hmm, that doesn't seem right. Maybe it was Interplanetary. Noland, something Noland. Um, I think they're called like the Noland brothers. I think like the the brothers and they work together on projects. Interstellar, Interstellar, not interplanetary. Um, that was amazing. I'd never seen that film before. It was so well written, uh, so well directed. The characters were fantastic. You cared about this guy. You cared about his family. You cared about all the characters around him. So this Noland guy, he knows what he's doing, which is why I don't understand why if he's directing this. There was some really sloppy direction. I, I can maybe only assume a lot of it was rushed. Maybe they had a very short time to do it, or their budget was really, really, really limited. Which would explain some of the scenes, like they, they shot in a very few locations. Or maybe they just wasted their budget, because they had like a, an entire town they set up, but then they didn't really do anything in it. Maybe future episodes we come back to this town. Maybe it's like a, um, a large um, stage that they set up where they can 
have multiple things and they can keep going back to this town. If not, huge wasted opportunity. Uh, salutation, says Erica. Pardon my late arrival. I've been having an exciting day with a friend. Well, I'm glad you, you've you missed me ranting about the Fallout show. <laughs> Canuck says, modern writers, no experience writing needed. Yeah, um, again, I'm... You know, who the hell am I? I'm just some dude who writes things for a mod and now an indie game project. Like, I'm not a Hollywood writer person, so, like, am I really someone to criticize these people who are getting these huge projects? Maybe I'm just jealous, who knows? But I did look into them, and they hadn't really done anything of note. And all the stuff they had done that I did know about, I was like, oh, those things aren't good. <laughs> but that that's what blows my mind. It's like, there's so many people out there who are so talented but they've they've not been discovered yet so here's what you do if you're if you're amazon hey amazon um i don't know why you're watching me on youtube because that's a competitor to you guys but whatever um so mr amazon who's watching me you want to make all the money right cool fantastic i'm right there with you money's fantastic you do some cool stuff with that money so here's what you do you've got you've got you've got so much money yourself but you want to make even more money so you hire one person and this one person's job what they have to do is they just go out into the world. They go on the internet and they look for people who've written books or made small independent projects. And they just they just read all these books and they watch all these projects and they find someone who's like really talented. Like, wow, this person made like a really, really good indie film. The budget's next to nothing, but look what they did with next to nothing. This is really good writing. I'm gonna suggest that we hire this person to write our next big project. We'll pay them 10 times what they were getting doing anything else and that's still really low compared to what you pay some of these Hollywood people so they're going to be happy because like they're getting 10 times the amount they normally get for this stuff we get a really talented writer and then that means our thing is really good because it's got good writing and let's do the same for, for a director now they did do it this time This uh, the Nolan guy, he's an amazing director everything I've seen of his is really really good so I don't know what happened there I don't know if they kind of pretended he was directing and someone else directed it instead, I don't know but I just, it, it boggles my mind that some of these things, they spend so much money on it, but they cheap out on certain things. And it's like, even if you think what you have is good, it could have been so much better. Definitely with uh, going back to the Rings of Power, that was awful. That was just awful. And they were being warned that it was awful, really, really like early into production, and they just ignored it. And I don't understand why, because, you know, capitalism, let's make all the money. Okay, cool. But you're doing it wrong? Why are you doing it wrong? I thought you wanted the money. Now you've lost all the money. I don't understand. Um, uh. <laughs> Eric says, tell us how you really feel. Uh, I just... It's wasted potential, I think, that annoys me the most. Um, but again, who knows? I'm only two episodes in. I'm ranting this much about it already. <laughs> I've wasted most of our time today. Uh, do it for the story, not for the money. Well, there you go, like... I think some of the most talented people out there are, those are the people you want, like, they don't care about the money, they just want to put a story out there, and you're like, well, okay, you're really talented and you just want to put a story out there, how about we also give you all the money to do that? And that person would say, of course I'm going to do that, and then bam, everyone wins. But they don't do it. Boggles my mind. I don't, I don't get why meritocracy has, like, vanished, because, like, if, if you're, if you're a greedy most generic capitalist guy with your monocle and your top hat and your big cigar you want all the money right then you'd want to hire the people who'd make you the most money but they don't and i don't get it <laughs> it's so confusing to me anyway that's my rant about the fallout show i hope you've enjoyed it <laughs> i hope i've not spoiled too much of it in terms of the story um i definitely hope i've not soured it for you if you guys have been watching and enjoying it don't listen to me. I'm just, I'm a crotchety old man who gets really upset about small things. <laughs> and I like Fallout. So things I like, I don't want them to be bad. I want them to be the best they possibly can be. Um, you know, I, I love Fallout 4, but there's plenty of stuff to criticize about it. And there's things I like about the, the Fallout TV show, but there's also plenty to criticize about it as well. Uh, oh, well, can, can uh retracted the message. It's on my screen, but I'm not going to read it. If you want to... Uh, Re redo that message and put it up. Ignore the message, okay. Um, I mean, you, you can re redo it if you want to put your thoughts out there in a different way. Uh, I was just about to read it as all, well, and I, I want to get input from you guys. Like, I want to know, like, what was your experience watching it? Did it 
did it feel good for you in the time? Did it deliver what you wanted? Because that's that at the end of the day is the important thing. Did you, the audience, get out of it what you wanted? Because that's uh something I need to keep in mind as someone who creates stories. Like it doesn't matter if I hate it really. Does everyone else like it? And if they all like it, then that's what I needed to do. That's my job. My job is to dance on stage for you people. And it doesn't matter if I hate the dancing. If you guys think it's great, I've done my job. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think about the TV show. It matters what the the most of the audience thought about it. And I suspect most of the audience probably enjoyed it. Because I think it, for the most part, delivered what people were wanting. Which is, they just want to see Fallout in a TV show. And that's what it is. It's not offensive. It's just not living up to what it could be with a few small changes. And that's why I've ranted for nearly an hour about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that was interesting. I have no idea. Like, I, I watch people who will go on a rant about something and explain why it is they don't like it or what annoyed them about it or what they think could be improved. And I always think it's interesting. But I have no idea if listening to me do, do the same is interesting for you guys. Hopefully it was. Hopefully I haven't just wasted your time. You wanted to you wanted to watch me play Fallout 4 and instead I'm ranting about a TV show that you, you don't care about. Uh... <laughs> uh... Hey, Erica, I was late too. I'm 30-ish, 13-ish minutes behind listening to Surik rant. Thank you. It's always nice for when people listen to me rant. Uh, Can says, I feel it was really silly. I enjoyed the comedy, so I did like it. But so much felt random and out of place to me. So that's the thing. Like, um, For me, a lot of the comedy didn't hit. But if it did, then I think the show again is going to deliver more to you because there's a lot of jokes in there. So if those are jokes that work for you, then that's good. Um, Erica. Seems I miss the spoilers still. <laughs> I feel more excited about the show stuff they added in the Fallout Shelter than the show itself. I like the new outfits. Yeah, they're, they're definitely wanting to do tie-ins. Um, I know they've done um, a Fallout Shelter tie-in. I think they're doing some 76 tie-ins. I don't think they're doing any Fallout 4 tie-ins, but they're using this as an opportunity to announce the new Enhanced Edition of Fallout 4 or Redux Edition or Special Remastered. I don't know what they're calling it. I mean, we can talk about that for a bit. Um, I, I've been wanting like a, um, like a Skyrim Special Edition for Fallout 4 for a long time, and that's not what they're doing. Uh, everyone said they're not going to do that, that's asking too much. And I really wanted that, I hope that's what it was, but nah, not really. There's maybe some bug fixes and like some small performance increases, but uh, for people playing on the PC, I don't think we're actually going to get all that much, and uh, that makes me sad. In a way, it's good, they're, they're just updating the main game and adding some improvements to it. So that's good in terms of it's hopefully not going to break as many mods uh, because now they don't have to update for an entirely new game like they had to do with uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Um, but downside of that is, well, now we don't get some huge improvements to the game engine. Like, I'm fairly sure there's probably stuff from Fallout 76 that could maybe be retrofitted to work in Fallout 4. And that would improve things in the engine, you know, just uh, some better visuals, uh, more memory to play with, like, you know, ev everyone complains, even even we SS2 guys complain about um, script lag in Fallout 4. And it's because with SS2 we really do push it to the limit of what it can do. So, you know, just, it, that could be doubled, the amount of scripting that the Fallout 4 engine could do, and I bet it could. It just takes time and effort, and to be fair, to be fair, to Bethesda, that takes time, effort, and money. And if it's not worth it, then it's not worth it. So they've probably sat down, looked at the numbers and said, well, it it makes sense to do this amount of work and this is the amount we'll get from it. And I think that's what they've done. So again, it's just, I was hoping for like the best possible thing they could do and yeah, they didn't do it. Uh, Canuck, I'm relieved. The power armor mostly looks like it has weight and accuracy of the look. Yes. <laughs> Iron 60 aside. Yeah, that, that flying stuff was done. The power armor, it looks good until you see it on screen. I, I got annoyed um, when Maximus is being interrogated and there's like a guy in power armor standing behind him. He's meant to be like big and intimidating. First of all, um, the voice modulation is a bit too much. Like they make him sound all, yeah, I'm a deep big guy behind you. It's like, yeah, they, the power armor makes you sound like a little bit like grr, 
but nowhere near as much as they do on the show. It's like really silly. So someone in that universe made a voice modulator that's job that it, it lowers your voice pitch by like five octaves. I think that's the correct measurement. And that was just dumb. I know why they did it. They wanted the power armor guy to be intimidating, but it's like, but why did that happen in universe? Like you can you can probably lower it just a tiny bit and then add the radio thing on top of it. <laughs> they did sound like well, they sounded actually worse than the Gwauld system lords. So anyone who's watched Stargate, there's uh, aliens in it called Gwauld, and they have a silly voice um, that they sort of put a, an effect over to make them sound all menacing and alien. It was like that, but a lot worse. Um, it was just dumb. But anyway, they had a power armor guy standing behind Maximus, being all intimidating. But because we were watching this prop for like five minutes, the more the guy moved, you could tell, oh, this this is a guy in a suit, and that's probably a really heavy suit. And like he's moving like, I've been in this thing for an hour and we've shot this scene five times and you can just see him like shaking his torso a little bit. And I'm like, okay, the power armor wouldn't move like that, but a guy wearing a fake power armor outfit would. And it's just like, you just they showed it a bit too much in certain scenes. Uh, but they did at least try to make it look like it was weighty now and again. Uh, he, yeah, he sounded like um, Frank Horrigan. So Frank Horrigan is from Fallout 2. And he is, spoilers for Fallout 2, he's a super mutant in power armor. You know, that's exactly what they were going for, Erica. Well done. That's oh, that's probably exactly what they were referencing, but they didn't realize, oh, that guy's a super mutant and so has like the deepest voice in the world. And that's why he sounds like that. <laughs> and they just thought, well, all power armor guys sound like that, don't they? And that's intimidating. We'll just... Again, it's, it's this level of, um, it's cool, but it makes zero sense the moment you start to think about it. There was quite a lot of that in the show. And I'm one of these annoying people who likes to think about things, and the moment something doesn't make sense, bam, I'm out of it. It just takes me out of it com completely. And unfortunately, there's a lot of that in modern writing and TV shows and modern writing in games. Games, you can get away with it. Because, like, if the game's just about running around and shooting things and it's fun, well, you don't care what the story is. Like, you can have silly things happen. That can be what the game's about, and that's often what Fallout's about. You don't care about the silly things because you're there to have fun and shoot things and run around in the silly world. And But we're watching a TV show now. And it's not a game. And you have to translate things, and there's just some stuff that didn't translate as good as it could have. And it just needed it needed that uh that Peter Jackson touch. Like someone to come in and I mean, I'm guessing this is meant to be Todd's job. Todd, what were you doing? Like your job is surely into, like I'm in charge of Fallout. I, I'm I'm the master, what I say goes. And he should have been like, nope, that's cool with the deep voice and the power armor, but uh that would make no sense, so we can't do that. For all I know, Todd said for all I know, Todd came in and said, make it lower. That voice, lower. And like, Todd, it, we can't make it go lower. That makes no sense. Lower. Okay, we've made it as low as we can. Okay, that's good. Now just a little bit lower. Todd, we can't do it. I don't know. I don't know whose idea that was. Um, like, they must have had like a law guy whose job was just like, you just know all the law. Like, you're there sitting on the wiki all day and just anything we write doesn't make sense. You, you got to tell us. <laughs> Todd, get it together, man. I think Todd was just happy to make a TV show. Uh, from everything I've seen from like um, promotional stuff, I think he's just having a whale of a time working on a TV show. <laughs> and I can't be mad at that. Like, if that's what he wants to do and that brings him joy, fair enough. Uh, he's doing what he loves. I just wish he was doing what he loves and also had stuff that made sense. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's probably not his job. He's probably there just to be like a, a general overseer. I'm hoping they did have someone whose job it was to be like a law master. A lot of TV shows do that, where it's like they just bring in someone who's a huge fan and just knows all the stuff, and then when the writer writes something, they'll be like, actually, that doesn't make sense, because in episode 252, uh, the quantum accelerator can only go in reverse, and in this scene, you've got it going forward like twice, and then the writers go, okay, thanks, nerd, that's useful, I guess. And I think there was, there must have been someone on the show, because a lot of it, you could tell was trying to fit in with games and past lore. So there must have been someone there um, telling them all this stuff, because I don't think it was the main writers. I don't think they ever played a Fallout game before, personally. Could be wrong. But I'm fairly sure the main two people who wrote all the episodes, they've never played a Fallout game. They don't know what it is. Um, that seems to be the case of a lot of adaptations. They get people in who, like, haven't read the book or haven't played the game, and then they sort of, like, take pride in it. It's like, oh, I've never played that because we're not, we're not translating the game. It's like... But that's what it is. That's why people are watching it. It's like um, the Witcher TV show. Strange example, because it started off good. I enjoyed the, um, most of season one of The Witcher. Um, I thought it was actually quite good. They definitely took creative liberties here and there. And there were certain things I'm like, oh, that 
that didn't really feel good or that didn't translate or they could have told that better but overall i enjoyed it until they got to like the last episode and then everything went weird and it turns out that's because up until this point they just sort of been translating um short stories from the books of the witcher and in the very last episode they just made a whole bunch of stuff up and yeah it showed because immediately i was like whoa something's wrong here and i think they did this to like um having like a completely different story happen in season two I didn't bother watching season two. I knew I would not enjoy it. Uh, they're going in a direction that clearly um, I'm not interested in. And from everything I've heard later, um, even uh, the main guy, Henry Cavill, who uh, I understand is a huge Witcher fan, he wasn't happy with it either. Um, and I can definitely understand why. I'm not the hugest Witcher fan, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a medium-sized fan. I think it's pretty darn cool. Um, like, I have a Witcher medallion. I've actually got a, a figure of Geralt over there. Um, if I dyed my hair white, I could probably be like a knockoff Geralt, maybe. You know, pretty big Witcher fan. Uh, and what's another show that, like, um, did an okay, um, transition from either book or... T there was another one I'm thinking of. Can't remember. I was, I was going to go on a completely different tangent rant about just directing, uh, or rather creating things from a source material and doing it well. And I can't remember what I was going to write about. Anyway, I'm over. That's my rant. It's been an hour. The Last of Us. There you go. That's not what I was thinking about, but that's a good example. Um, I think they did... I've, I've not seen all of it yet, yet, but I have seen breakdowns of it. And I think they have done a good job translating it. And they've taken creative liberties, of course. You always have to do that. Some of them I don't agree with. But overall, I think they did an okay job. Um, I did get annoyed that like they cast um, an actress for Ellie. And I was like, that doesn't look like Ellie. And then they cast another actress to play a different role. I'm like, she looks like Ellie. Why don't you just switch these two around? I'm. If you've seen it, you might know who I'm talking about. Like, there's the actress for Ellie. It just doesn't look like Ellie to me. Um, and then there's someone else that they cast later on to play a completely different character. And I thought looked like completely like Ellie. I think she's like in her 20s or something. And that's probably why they're like, yeah, she's too old. But she didn't look old enough. She could have played Ellie. I would have believed it. Like, actors pretend. They play younger and older people all the time. So that was a bit weird. Um, but overall, I've heard very good things about the uh, Last of Us TV show. So that's that's a good example. Of, and, well, the guy in charge of it, um, Neil Druckmann, I get, he was the Todd Howard, Todd Howard of that show. Like, he, he was... I don't think he was the main writer of it, but he was definitely, like, in a higher position in it. And so I think he was there to oversee things. <laughs> actors pretend... They do pretend. This, I know, it's uh, shocking news to me as well, but um, when I heard that, blown away, I thought they were real people. Um, strange thing about uh, Neil Druckmann, though. Um, I think he really dropped the ball in The Last of Us 2. I, I'm one of those people who does not like The Last of Us 2. But from what I can tell, I think there, originally there was two major writers for The Last of Us 1. I think Neil Druckmann was one of them, and there's someone else, and I think they left. And I think whoever that person was was like the glue to it like they held everything together so when they left like things started to unravel and weren't as good as they were in one and that's a shame um so i'll just i'll just play the first one that's fine anyway we've we've been talking for an hour about a silly tv show um that everyone else probably likes and i've just been like i don't like it i'm an old man i'm grumpy but i hope you enjoyed it we have maybe half an hour. Would you like me to play some Fallout for half an hour, or do you want me to keep ranting about random TV shows and games and things? Oh, we do. There's other things I could talk about if you want me to go that route. I, I will wait for the chat. I didn't intend to rant as long as I did about the Fallout TV show, but uh, I'm hoping you guys found it interesting. Here, here's the fun thing. Technically speaking, I do have a working relationship with Bethesda now. And I'm like, I don't like the TV show based on the game you guys made. And Todd was working on it, and I don't like it. <laughs> and, like, one day I'm going to meet these guys, and I'm like, So, you don't like the TV show, do you? Because we all like it. And they're going to beat me up, like all those Brotherhood guys were beating up Maximus for no reason. But they'll have a reason to beat me up, because I, I was mean to the show that they like. <laughs> I don't hate it. Okay, Bethesda people, I don't hate the show, I just hate things in it. And if you remove those things, I probably like it a lot more. I'm just really, really picky. Okay, there's, there's a side rant while I, I wait for people to tell me if they want me to play the game or just rant more about things. Um, I think you can be very, very critical of stuff, and it doesn't mean that you hate it or you, you, you know, want 
you think everyone who likes it is stupid, or you want to see it destroyed. I think often the things you get the most passionate about in terms of hating it is because there's something there you care about, and you want to see it do well. Otherwise, you know, where is that passion coming from? You know, if you, if you didn't care and you just hate it, like, yes, I don't care, it's stupid, just let it do its own thing. Eric says, I don't hate the show, I just hate you and everything you stand for. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, the show's great, I just hate everyone who likes it. They're stupid. <laughs> no, I think there's loads of things to like about it. And of the things that don't bug you about it, that bug me about it, let me re let me redo that sentence. If the things that bug me about the show don't bug you, then you can enjoy it in a way that I can't. And I'm not saying those things that annoy me have to annoy you. I'm just saying that they annoy me, and it's not the way I do it. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, who cares what I think? Unless you're playing the things I write, in which case you probably do care what I think. Well, that's another thing. It's um the, the reason I'm so I think about these things all the time is yeah that's that's kind of my job now. I I need to make stories and characters and to me it has to make sense and there has to be logical consistency and it has to feel good and audiences have to like it and they have to like the characters and i have to let people bond with the characters and how do i do that sometimes i want them to hate a character good example berman you, you are meant to hate berman and i know not everyone does hate berman i'm looking at a certain someone i don't think he's watching right now but he might be later but he's a character who you're also meant to love to hate so maybe you just outright hate him. Maybe you love to hate him. Maybe for some crazy reason it turns around and becomes... You love him. Either way, for the most part, I've got the reaction I need from that character and therefore I can use him to do things with. The night guy who you're meant to hate in the Fallout show, he's, he's their Berman, but they just don't do what they need to do with him. And it's just like, it's not that difficult. You know, there's a reason Berman kills old Paul. It's because he's not a nice guy and we want to show it, we don't want to tell it. How do we show it? Well, he does a really awful, awful thing. Now we hate him. Uh, Canuck. Uh, game or talk? I could go either way. Is there enough time to get something done? <laughs> Probably not. We can maybe do a a quest. I think the CPD had just started. Um, although at this point we've only got um, about 18 minutes left, so maybe not. Maybe I've, <laughs> maybe I've ranted for too long. I really am hoping you guys have enjoyed this. If you enjoy listening to me rant off on a random topic, I can do this for hours. Assuming that I have a topic that's interesting to you guys. I could rant about anything, really, but most of the things you guys would not be interested in. I would. I'd care deeply. But that's not what this is about. Uh, Erica says, I know that the show is just the beginning, uh, but do you have an idea of what we would... I don't I'm so bad at reading. Of what you would like to see happen based on what you've seen so far. A direction you think could make the show better. Um, I mean, right away, I could rewrite... I get that. This is so, like, I'm so clever. I'm so smart. I could do a way better job. But I kind of could. I can already see ways that they could um, improve episodes one and two. Like, I go back in time. They hire me to show. I just say, okay, we, you, you've got all this planned out this way. Um, just remove this scene, add this scene in, have more stuff with Lucy, let us see more time with her families. So, okay, here's a, here's a side rant. What they do with Sean in Fallout 4, they do with, with this dad character. We don't care about this dad character, I can't even remember his name. He's the Overseer of the Vault. Couldn't tell you his name, I, I don't really know anything about him other than he's the Overseer. I don't care that he's been kidnapped, therefore I can't see things from Lucy's point of view. Like, she cares because it's her dad. Why do we care? Because it's her dad, but we don't care about her dad. So it's like, just spend some time. And then you can do this, and you can do it with, without spending much time at all. Um, a good example from a game, and I think games are much harder to do than a TV show, because again, you have less control in a game of the player. Although, this game actually kind of did it a TV way show. A TV way... Fuck. <laughs> this game did it in a way that a TV show would. So I'm thinking of Cyberpunk. Um, I cared about Jackie, um, your your buddy character. And you're not really, you don't spend that much time with him, really, in the grand scheme of things. But they did such a good job of making you like him, presenting him as a decent way. They even do, like, a montage to show, like, you move in with him, you have um, jobs you do with him. And, like, I cared about him. I cared about him way more than I cared about Sean in uh, Fallout 4. And yet, in this TV show, they're doing the same thing with the dad character. The, the dad is Sean. Do we care about dad Sean? Nope. <laughs> we don't know who he is. We don't care. Um... 
Chat stream is good. Thank you, Kunok. This is nice. Okay. People seem to like listening to me, right? Uh, I don't even know that guy. We don't know that guy. Uh, you, you have done better. SS2 is popular for a number of reasons, including the writing. Thank you. That's very... That's so kind. <laughs> I, I think someone's lagging behind in chat. Knock off Geralt. Yes, I talked about that, that 15 minutes ago. I, I could do a really bad, cheap... Uh, what's it called? Um... Not knockoff. Give a word. Off brand. Off brand Geralt. I could I could pull that off. Um, it's like with Jake. We care about him uh, when he goes and gets kidnapped by the gunners. Exactly. Um, if you if Jake was kidnapped after the first two quests, why would you care? You you got you either have to spend the time doing it, or you have to put the effort in to make it happen really quickly. So, the film uh, I was talking about before that the director guy did, the Nolan, is it Christopher Nolan or is that his brother? That's the only name that comes to mind. I don't know the other brother's name <laughs> um, but in that film I was talking about before Interstellar I really cared about the dad character in that and I cared about his family and we probably spent as much time getting to know them as we did with the people in the Fallout show like there was a same amount of time passed that you could have used for me to build a connection to these characters and they didn't do that and they could have and I don't know why they didn't and this seems to me like very basic writing stuff. Um, and again, it could be down to they, they ran out of time and they just had to ship with what they had. Because that is a very real problem. Uh, that, you know, a lot of writers often don't have the time to do what they would need to make a good story. Um, once you read something, you Christopher Nolan. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, a lot of writers don't have time to actually put the effort into to craft something. Um, that's decent. Um, and so that's often why, you know, a TV show or a film, they feel bad. It's because, well, the writer had the talent, they just didn't have the time. Because often you will read something and be like, oh, that's amazing. But the time you took to read it is not the same as the time it took to write it. It takes a long time to write something and to write it good. And I think a lot of uh, studios often push writers to just churn stuff out. And like, first of all, you just can't care about stuff you're creating that fast. And you also can't create good stuff if you're doing it that fast. Like, at the moment, we, we do some pretty fast turnover on SS2 and on our current project, but we still take the time to review things and to polish them and to go back. Like, we're, we're literally walking the wire. Walking the wire? That's not a saying. Walking the razor's edge in terms of how fast can we do something, but how high can we keep the quality? And I like to think we're doing quite well so far. But maybe in this uh, TV show, maybe they just did not give them the time to... Because again, when you're watching it, it feels very like they've got all the beats. They just don't flesh out the beats. And so we need the audience to hate this Power Armor guy. Let's just have him be a jerk nonstop. And it doesn't make sense and it's out of context. And he just swears at um, Maximus and calls him names. But why does he swear and call Maximus names? I don't know. Because we, we need the audience to hate the character. But why is he being a jerk? I don't know. Berman has a reason for being a jerk. And some of it's right there in front of you. Um, eventually you can ask him. Some of it you'll get clues. Um, and when I'm writing Berman, that's always in my head of like, why is Berman doing this? He's always got a reason for being a jerk and being nasty and mean. Um, sometimes that reason is he just doesn't give a shit. But there's character reasons for that. And you can learn some of those character reasons. Like he, he's, he's jaded. He really just doesn't give a shit anymore. He kind of does. We can learn more about him. But this um, Power Armor guy who dies and who Maximus steals the Power Armor of, I don't know why he's being a jerk. He's dead now. Like, so clearly it wasn't important. Uh, <laughs> we didn't learn about it before he died. Maybe there's flashbacks and we learned that uh, Maximus was a jerk to him. And I don't know. But I doubt it. They just didn't put the time in. Uh, Canuck, Google. Jonathan Noland, brother of Oppenheimer director Christopher. Okay, so it's Jonathan Nolan who directed this. Okay, Irik, you lied. You said it was Christopher Nolan. I'm gonna guess maybe then. Okay, this is again. This is me being like, these guys suck. I'm so much better than they are. But I'm gonna guess Christopher Nolan is the really, really, really good director, and Jonathan Nolan, if he's the one that directed the Fallout show, that might explain why it's not as good as like the film that I watched that was amazing. Ah, okay, Irik says that's the guy who directed Interstellar. Okay, so that makes sense. Interstellar, I thought, was so well done. So I'm guessing maybe Jonathan Nolan doesn't have as much experience, or maybe this is his first time directing. I don't know. Maybe they always direct together and they each balance each other out. I don't know. Some, something, 
something's definitely missing in the direction. It felt not good. <laughs> uh, Erica. Good stuff takes time to make. Without time, wine would just be fruit juice. Hey, sometimes I like fruit juice. <laughs> but that does make sense. You, you need... Yeah, you need time to not only craft something, but to test it. Um, you know, that's why when they make films or TV shows, they do storyboards. Where they, they sketch out like a frame of this is how this frame would look here's what the character would say and you know they have a little stick they point to it and go in this frame this happens this frame this happens and then as they're going through it and sort of pretending to do the story they find faults and say oh wait a minute we didn't explain this thing that happens later you're right we need to go back and add a scene but about that oh but that doesn't make sense with this okay then we have to remove that but we then we lose this important thing but that's okay we can move that important thing over here oh great now that all makes sense um and that is also how I kind of do things um, when I'm writing for SS2, for example. Um, like when you do the quest where you return to Vault 111, I will write out what feels good and seems to be correct, and I'll have that all written out and planned out. And then I'll actually go into game, and I'll have, you know, uh, I'll pretend that Jake's with me, and I'll act it out. I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel good because this corridor is too long, so I need to like make this longer, or I need to move some dialogue here, so we've not got this long time where nothing's been said. Um, this scene doesn't make sense because we we need to talk about things, but those things aren't in the room. I know. I'll just move it over here. Now that works. You know, that's just what you do. You always th that's kind of a way of storyboarding, but in a game that's already existing. Um, it, it feels like they just didn't do that with the Fallout show as much as they should have. Like things weren't polished. They just said, here's how the story could go, and they said, that's a good idea, let's shoot it. Again, I'm just... That's what it feels like. I really doubt that's what they did. <laughs> because I'm sure they spent a lot of money on this, and if you're spending money, you don't want to be so blasé about it. <laughs> I could do this for hours. Yes, that is a that is a quote I said. If you get me ranting on something that I, I have an opinion about, you better buckle up, because we're going to be here for some time. Today we're talking about the Fallout TV show, but who knows next time? There's so many, so many things you can get me on a rant about. I mean, off the top of my head, you could get me ranting about Star Trek. I love Star Trek. I hate all of the new Star Trek. Hate it. Hate it so much. Uh, so you could get me ranting forever about that. Um, Mass Effect. I love Mass Effect. Hate the ending. And I could tell you why the ending's bad. I was talking about that uh, with someone recently of the original ending for Mass Effect. Um, it makes so much more sense. It's clearly what's been uh, established in all the games. If this isn't the ending, um, and someone's just been lying to me on the internet, you know, I don't think people would do that though. I don't. I don't think anyone would lie on the internet. That seems a bit out there. But if they did, then this ending they invented still makes way more sense. It's called the Dark Matter ending. Um, you might be able to find it if you Google it. Uh, but I could rant about that for just how much they messed it up and how much this, that ending makes way more sense. Um, I could rant about Baldur's Gate three. Because this is a video I might make one day. I wanted to make this before Baldur's Gate 3 was even released. Um, because I, I already knew how I felt about it. Uh, but I'll, sum I'll summarize it for you. Baldur's Gate 3, I think, is a really, really good game. I think it's a really, really bad Baldur's Gate game. Those are two very different things. And then I could break down all those differences and explain to you, like, this is what a good Baldur's Gate game would do. Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't do it. And then I'll go through this list and be like, okay, so at the end you can see why this is a bad Baldur's Gate game. But here's all the stuff that Baldur's Gate 3 does really well, and that's why it's a good game. Because I do think it's a very good game. I think Larian did what they wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, everything they want to do is basically the complete opposite of what I'd want. <laughs> so I've, I've not been able to play and enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 yet. I'm waiting until there's a lot of mods out there that I can hopefully change the things that annoy me the most. And then I could enjoy it, because... I do think it is a really good game. It's for similar reasons that the, the Fallout show annoyed me. They just need to change certain things so that I like it, because that's what's important. Eirik says, There are so many things I hate. Quoting me again, there is. There's so many things I hate. But the, the, Most of these things come, come from a place of passion. Like, um, I don't know, name like a random TV show, and it's like, I don't care. Like, it's awful, but I don't care. Whatever. Um, the Wiggles. That music group, The Wiggles. I don't hate those guys. I really don't think their music's for me. But I don't hate them. But if I cared about them, and they started making really, really bad music all of a sudden, then you can guarantee I'd have a five-hour-long rant about 
how the Wiggles were better 10 years ago, and I'm going to break down for you every single point. I couldn't name for you one of the Wiggles. I just know they do a song about salad. That's about it. <laughs> okay, we're coming up to like five minutes before I normally end the stream, so we have, we have five minutes if you want to get any questions in, if you want to if you want to mention anything about the Fallout show that maybe I haven't mentioned. Uh, oh, okay, so Canuck says, uh, Jonathan Noland, Fallout 3 episode, directed Westworld 3 episode, wrote on Westworld 36 episodes. Okay, so he wrote some episodes. Uh, person of interest, Interstellar, Dark Knight Rises, The Dark Knight, The Prestige. He's, he's definitely worked on some great things. Um, Westworld was really good the first season. And then the second season, I stopped watching because I can't remember why. I I just remember I stopped liking it quite soon in season two. I think there's a season three. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't understand some of the... Again, it could be that they were rushed and that's why some of the direction feels bad in the TV show. And why certain things feel rushed, certain things feel, feel slow and like... Again, I don't know why they did so much slow motion in that first episode when we're just watching vault dwellers run around a vault going, ah, maybe they didn't have enough footage. That could be what it is. And just like, oh, let's just put it all in slow motion and have like 10 minutes of slow motion because we have five minutes we need to fill. Genius. Maybe that's what it was. Again, the interesting thing is like, I'm speculating about all of this. I just know what feels bad, but I couldn't tell you why it feels bad. The Guiding Star asks, this is off topic, but what is Algernon's first name? You know what? Off the top of my head, I could not tell you, but let's see if I have it in my notes somewhere. Um, boo -boo -boo. I'm fairly sure I have given him a first name. I normally do that for my characters. Uh, oh, that is not where I will find that. <laughs> is it Tim? It might be Tim. Algernon. I think my OBS just told me it disconnected. Okay, I think that's good. If I cut out for a moment there, OBS seemed to do some some bad stuff. Are we still hearing me? Are we still good? I'm, I'm going to wait for confirmation that you guys can still hear me. That's the first time that's ever happened to me on a stream. Never had a problem before. Yes, okay. We can still hear. Fantastic. Let's see. Okay, I've got a character sheet for Algernon. I don't have his name on here. It's just Algernon. I'm going to look that up. He, Al Al. Al Algernon. That's difficult to say. I don't think that's what his name is. <laughs> Al Algernon. It could be Alan Algernon. That rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That was strange. Um, did you notice like a hiccup? Did I stop broadcasting for a moment? I just got a pop-up on my screen saying OBS has stopped doing something. And I don't know what it was. Uh, Algernon Generic. I think somewhere, at some point, I've had a character who knew him in the past say his first name. But that might be in a quest that hasn't been released yet, so... So, so there's some hidden lore for you. Um, a main cast character in Sim Settlements 2, who joins the HQ, so that's really narrowing it down. Um, has a past with Algernon. And you can probably figure it out if you use some logic. And I will neither confirm or deny it, but you guys have probably figured it out already. <laughs> no, I can't find his name. I I'm fairly sure it's in a quest and I don't. I can't access those uh, easily. They are in a twine file, uh, which is what I use to write the quests. The screen flashed for like a second. Hmm, very strange. Erica, I cannot confirm or deny what you feel it might be. But I feel that you might be maybe correct, but that's just a feeling. It is. It's Cassandra, but don't tell anyone, okay? I'm going to trust you. Because if anyone else finds out, I'll know it was you who told them. And I will be mad at you. Okay, we have... We have a minute left. Is that dialogue in the game yet? No, I don't think it is. Um, I think that's... Uh, so, there are mentions of Algernon in Chapter 3, but we weren't sure we'd be able to get his voice actor back. 
Uh, but then just before we release chapter three, he's like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm able to do it and I'm more than willing to do it, I think he said. Could be wrong. Uh, but by then it was a bit too late, so at least we probably know we will get future Algernon content, but we couldn't ship with um, his quest, but he did have a quest planned. We are hoping to get it in the future, and that is why there are mentions of him in the game, because, well, as we know in Chapter 3, we gather factions to go fight the Gunners, and, well, Algernon was up to something in Chapter 2. Or maybe it paid off, who knows? Ah, but we will be wrapping very shortly, so get in any questions, any queries before we wrap. I am planning to stream next week. Next week, we're almost certainly going to be playing Fallout 4 again. I didn't plan to rant so long about uh, the TV show. But I found it cathartic, and I'm hoping you guys found it at least a little bit interesting. Hopefully. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought Algernon was his first name. I think it's his second name. I don't know. It's because I've only called him Algernon. It could be Eva. I can change my mind until it's in stone. Um, I think to me it was always like a code name. Like it wasn't his real name. He just went by Algernon. Like that's his wasteland name as it were. But I haven't quite decided yet. All I know is that a certain other character, whose name I won't say, does mention... calls him by a different name. That's like more of a normal name, so you could, you could consider it to be his first name, or his real name. And maybe I'll leave that open. Maybe I've not decided what I want it to be, so I can just leave it up to interpretation. Which is one of those fun things you can do with writing. You, you can let the audience decide what the true meaning is. That's some of my favourite writing, by the way. Small mini rant before we end. When writing was good in the past, writers tended to treat the audience with a bit more... They treated the audience like they had some amount of intelligence. And so if they wanted to present a, a topic, you know, let's go with... Let's go with some classic Star Trek stuff. St old Star Trek, and by that I mean like the original series and the next generation, would often use analogies when talking about things like racism. Because you have aliens. And with aliens, you can have analogies and metaphors for human racism. And you can have the characters looking from the outside and be, say things like, doesn't this look so silly? But what they did was, they didn't just have like the racist aliens and then the other aliens that those aliens were being racist towards. They kind of presented both sides of the argument. And you can kind of see, well, I get why these aliens don't like these aliens. And I get why these aliens don't like these aliens. And they are kind of being jerks to each other, but they both kind of have the point, and, and maybe those aliens, maybe they're right, I don't know. And that's how they'd present an argument to you. They'd give you the facts, they'd kind of give you both sides of the argument, and I'm going to guess that most old Star Trek writers, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speculate that they weren't racist, and that the message they were trying to get out there was, racism's bad. And you know what, I think I agree with that message. I think almost everyone who's remotely decent agrees with that message. But they didn't beat you over the head with it. Instead, they presented an interesting take on it and even tried to make an argument for it. Like, well, here's some reasons why you might want to be a racist. And they were so good at it that you were kind of like, oh, those aliens, they actually have a point. And it's, that then allows you as the audience to empathize with someone who's technically a racist character. And it's like, well, that's interesting. I can now understand something in a way that I couldn't before. And it's because they weren't scared that the audience was so stupid that the audience would go, Oh, those aliens are correct. Racism's great. They do that so much now. They With modern writing, this is what they do now. So old writing, they didn't do that. They respected the audience. They present more nuanced points and allow you to sort of reach a conclusion. And of course, they're, they're pointing you towards a certain conclusion because that's just what you do. But they also left it open to interpretation and maybe you take a different route to get to that conclusion. Maybe you'd yourself be able to be like, well... I maybe was a tiny bit racist like those aliens and because I felt and understood some of the things they were talking about but they were kind of wrong in the episode maybe I'm wrong maybe I should look at myself and, and reflect on myself there that's what the old writing did new writing they just say racism's bad and they bonk you over the head with it until you want to cry they just keep beating you and beating you and the thing is you already know it's bad and so you, you, see, you end up not caring 
I don't know, can't remember why I got into that side rant, but that's just a good example of old writing and bad writing. Um, there was a reason I, I went on that rant. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> um, oh, it was, that's right. It was because I was saying that's a fun thing you, you can do with writing. You can leave things open and allow an audience to interpret it however they want. And I think that's really good writing. Some older games did it as well. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines did that fantastically in that they kind of presented dark and nuanced things in such a way where you, the player, might end up agreeing with something or disagreeing with something and it allowed you to think about it and kind of really look in of yourself like, why, why do I believe these things? Are they correct? Am I the bad guy? Am I the good guy? Who knows? Uh, Erica says, I love doing name research and okay, it looks like Algernon is a given name, so I'm guessing it's technically uh, counts as neither. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, it might be up to you at the end of the day to decide how Algernon's name works. But I will say uh, we will have a, a character refer to him as a different name, and that is, in quotations, his real name. Or at least a name he used to go by at some point. Because people can change names. Uh, like, I think uh, many of us know that Wise, he's not called Wise. That's not his real name. But it kind of is. Because there's a story behind that. Right, we're going to be wrapping up very soon, because otherwise I'm going to go on a rant about something completely unrelated. But... I'm just checking my analytics. Uh, usually, so people, you know, they drop in, drop out, you watch some gameplay, you go do something else, get distracted. This has been a weirdly consistent viewing uh, amount I've had. Like, you guys have stuck around for this one, so thank you very much for that. I, I can only assume that means there was something of worth in my ranting, or at the very least, it was entertaining. And at the end of the day, that's probably what I want to do the most. I just want to entertain you guys. Uh, fun fact, Algernon, a French nickname derived from the words meaning having a moustache. Algernon does have a moustache, and that's why he has that name. <laughs> you figured it out, Erica. You, 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 you ruined it. That was a secret. No one was meant to know that. Guiding Star. Yep, it's fun. I'm glad. Maybe I'll do more of this. If there's any topics in the future, um, maybe I'll actually write down some notes so I'm coherent and I'm not just jumping around and discussing absolute random things and then forgetting to talk about things and having to double back on myself. But it was... I enjoyed it. <laughs> I always enjoy ranting about stuff that annoys me. But for now, we're going to call it uh, quits for today. Thank you very much for joining me for this very different episode. This feels like it should be like the 100th episode or something, but I think we're on episode 16. Chill and enjoyable discussion. Well, thank you, Canuck. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> But uh, next time, definitely, we're going to be playing um, some more Fallout 4. So I will see you next week. And until then, thank you, as always, for tuning in and watching. Tuning in. As if this is television. This isn't television. <laughs>